Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we will be covering the second installment of my Sri Lanka history series and uh, I suggest you watch the first episode of this series as you will need to watch it in order to understand what is going on in this part of the series. Let's get into it. Uh, thanks to Pandula's training, Pandukabe was able to gather an army to fight his eight uncles. The war lasted 17 years. During the war, Panduwasudeva's son, Abhya, was ruling over Upatissanura and secretly helping Pandukabaya. When Pandukabaya was old enough to become king, he waged war against it, his eight uncles. All of uh, Pandukabaya's uncles perished in the war. Only two of his uncles, Abhya and Girikanda Siva, lived. Pandukabaya chose a sell settlement built by one of his granduncles named Anuradha Gama to be his capital and renamed it to be Anuradhapura. Pandukabaya built a splendid palace in Anuradhapura. The king built irrigation systems that improved agriculture and built sewer systems as well. He constructed trams for all sorts of groups of people who believed in various deities. Anuradhapura became a powerful and beautiful capital that, uh, uh, that would last for over a millennium. Pandukabaya was an excellent king who ruled for 70 years, making him the longest reigning king on the island uh, in all of Sri Lanka's history until his death in 367 BCE at the age of 107, making him also the, the, the uh, oldest king to rule Sri Lanka. He is considered by many historians to be the first official king of the island. King Panduk, uh, and then if you look to your top right, you will see a portrait of King Pandukabaya, the first official king of Sri Lanka and founder of the Anuradhapura kingdom. Now we'll get into the son of King Pandukabaya, King Mutasiva. King Mutasiva was the son of King Pandukabaya. He was the older brother of Prince Suratissa. The date of his birth and death is unknown, but it is possible that he died around the late 3rd century BCE. During Mutasiva's reign, he built the famous Maha Mevanawa Park in Anuradhapura, which can still be visited today. He had nine sons. Like his father, he was a good king who had ruled the island for 60 years of peace. After his resignation or possible death, Mutasiva's son, Devanam Piyatissa, inherited the throne of Anuradhapura. If you look to your right, you will see a family tree of uh, House Vidya, the Vijayan dynasty in the early Anuradhapura uh, period. So we start off with Pandukabaya at the top. Then we have Mutasiva. Uh, then we have uh, Mutasiva's nine sons, Mahanaga, Devanam Piyatissa, who's the oldest, then Suratissa, Asela, and five more sons. Now Suratissa is all... Uh, uh, Suratissa was named after his brother, which is not listed here, but is listed in the text over here. Anyways, let's get into the third slide for the second part. The introduction of Buddhism. Devanam Piyatissa became the king of Sri Lanka in the mid-2nd century BC after his father, Mutasiva. Early in his reign, he had formed a good friendship with the legendary Indian emperor, Asoka. Asoka's goal was to spread Buddhism throughout the continent. Asoka sent his son, Mahinda, to convert Devanam Piyatissa to Buddhism. Devanam Piyatissa converted and, to Buddhism and spread it through, throughout the entire island. King Devanam Piyatissa ruled Sri Lanka until 207 BCE. He was a good king like his predecessors. During his reign, Mahinda bought a part of the Bodhi tree that the Buddha get, had gained enlightenment under. Devanam Piyatissa planted the tree and it remains the oldest planted tree in the world for which we have a known planting date. Devanam Piyatissa's son was supposed to rule after his brother, Mahanaga, but Devanam Piyatissa's son died due to poison, and Mahanaga understood that it wasn't safe to live in Anuradhapura any longer. Mahanaga fled to, safe Ruhun, uh, to a safe area and founded the kingdom of Ruhina. If you look to your right, you'll see a picture of the Jaya Sri Mahabodhi, which is over 2,000 years old and still stands today. King Devanam Piyatissa is most famous for converting to Buddhism and bringing Buddhism to the island, which has which is still the dominant religion on in Sri Lanka for over 2,000 years. The first Kola invasions. Now, the Kolas are a southern Indian group or a kingdom that ruled South India around the same time that uh, the kingdom of Anuradhapura was ruling Sri Lanka. 
<coughs> in Anuradhapura, after Devan Atissa's death, his brothers reigned over the kingdom one by one. Eventually, Suratissa, brother of the late Mutasiva, inherited the throne. Suratissa reigned for 10 years until in 237 BC when he was killed in battle by two uh, Tamil, uh, which were South Indian horse traders, by the name of Sena and Gutika. Uh, the youngest of Devanam Piatissa's brothers, named Asela, defeated the Tamils in 215 BC and reigned over the, the island for about 10 years until in 205 BC, a member of the Kola dynasty named Elalan, or Elara, invaded uh, the kingdom and successfully managed to capture Anuradhapura and Rajarata. Now, Rajarata is the, the, land, the, king, the lands of Anuradhapura, so the territory. Asela was killed in battle by Elalan. Despite, despite having invaded the island, according to the Mahavamsa, Elalan was one of Sri Lanka's wisest kings. Elalan was a good ruler who quickly gained the respect of the people. If you look to your top right, you'll see a statue of Elalan. <coughs> and now we'll get into the kingdom of Ruhuna. When Mahanaga fled, he founded the kingdom of Ruhuna. Uh, Mahanaga had a son named Yat- Yatalatissa. Yatalatissa had a son named Gotabir. Gotabir had a son named Kavantissa. And Kavantissa uh, was coordinated in 205 BC. Uh, over the same year, the same year that Elalan invaded Rajarata, Kavantissa ruled over Ruhuna as a good king and ga- gathered forces to fight Elalan. Kavantissa was wise and knew of Elalan's power and fame, so he didn't wage war on Elalan immediately. Kavantissa had two children. Many fables are told about Dutugamanu uh, when his mother's caring him. Now, uh, Dutugamanu is uh, one of Kavantissa's children. Um, the eldest was named Gamini Abia, uh, who was due to Gamini, and the second was named Sadatissa. Gamini Abia grew up longing to take back Rajarata and regain Anuradhapura from Kola rule. When Gamini Abia grew into a man, he asked his father for per- permission to fight Elalan. Kavantissa, fearing for his son's safety and knowing of Elalan's power, refused. Gamini Abia insulted his father multiple times because of this causing King Kavantissa to throw Gamini Abhya into the dungeon. Gamini Abhya received a new new game, Dushta Gamini or Dutu Gamini, meaning unruly Gamini. Uh, Dutu Gamini escaped with his mother's help and fled to a village near present-day Kandy, where he started to build the resources to fight Elalan. And now, if you look to your right, you'll see House Vijaya during the kingdom of Ruhuna and Elalan's rule of Anuradhapura and Rajarata. So you see Mahanaga, who is the brother of Dayanam Piyatissa. Then you, you see Yatolatissa in the Gotabe and Kavantissa. And that is where we'll end today. I hope you like this video. Remember to hit the like and subscribe button. And until then, I'll see you next time.